So I'd like to start with a, um, a bit of a look back. So we've uh, set ourselves a lot of goals for 2019 for the cloud. And at this point, actually very happy to say that we've, we've achieved really uh, we, all of those to a, to a large degree. Uh, one of the first ones is, um, oh, not dropping my mic. <laughs> uh, one of the first ones is feature content. So we've built out, uh, I think one thing we have now is a set of applications that are a, a full set. So there's three applications. We have Opria Professional available to you in a browser. We have Cost Insight Design, this great new web application. And we also now have Cost Insight Report. So that really gives you the full suite of applications hosted in the cloud. And a big, a part, big part of those three applications is our um, new Cost Insight Design web application specifically built for design engineers. So we've made a ton of progress there. And uh, some of the uh, sort of features and details I'll share specifically around that. Uh, to support all of that, you really need a, a, a big platform and, and, and a powerful platform. So we've done a lot of work around building scalability, uh, building more high availability and performance into that platform to support the customer deployments we're building out now. And uh, of course, a, a big element of that as well is to have the right kind of operations and services and support. So we have an operations team that supports us in, in delivering these cloud deployments and working with the uh, services organization also now have sort of standardized approaches and packages around how, uh, if you're interested in migrating to cloud, how we might do that for you, and, and, uh, or if you're a brand new customer to a priori, how we might sort, of, might sort of implement and onboard and train you for the cloud solution. And then finally, we've, we've set a goal to um, sort of officially really go to market and start building out production accounts. Uh, for, with many of you that are in the user council and that have worked with before in the past, uh, or team has, we've done a number of previews uh, and we've sort of shared a lot of data about the previews and early visibility programs here at these conferences. And we just completed early this year a Lighthouse program. The key goal was to sort of transition from that into production and we're now sort of uh, with our third production deployment and rapidly moving to uh, 10 plus before the end of the year and, and then a, a solid pipeline beyond that. And interestingly, I think it's a good mix. It's not just new customers that are going to the cloud and it's not just, uh, or old customers, it's a good mix of sort of both existing customers that are doing that transition, uh, some new customers that are going to the cloud and uh, also a range of both in Europe and in the US as well as some in, in APAC and uh, even across industries. So there's, uh, I, I couldn't point to one specific sort of domain that is, is leading this. So we see a very nice broad spectrum of customers that are working with us to move to the cloud. So a lot of great progress. And um, that also has really enabled us sort of one of the, you might have seen sort of variations on this slide earlier. Uh, one of the key things we want to do is deliver this connected set of applications that allow you to work collaboratively in the cloud. So you might have a design engineer that starts out with cost insight design and they do a comparison of different designs they want to evaluate and consider. Uh, that uh, those designs would then be sort of published or shared with a cost engineer that would be using a priori professional to sort of deep dive and do some analysis and do some tweaks and prepare a, a set of parts for supplier negotiation and then you might reach out to a supplier. So earlier downstairs, um, we had a presentation around supplier collaboration and talked a bit about how that might connect into this workflow. And then of course you have the reporting tools that we've now delivered in the cloud as well, um, that uh, the Cost Insight Report application, which allows you to generate and build the reports uh, that sort of uh, bring all that data together and allow you the insights you need to uh, analyze and, and sort of track and, and the work and value that you're generating. So a pretty complete, comprehensive, collaborative set of solutions in the cloud. Now out of that, um, for this sort of this year, I wanted to highlight uh, some of the key projects. And the, the way we've sort of prioritized this over the year and since last year is in these early previews, we've worked with a lot of uh, customers and I think about 20 customers total and many visits uh, understanding what are the highest priorities of building out our cloud solution. Uh, those included uh, assembly, more assembly features, uh, more design to cost, more control for the designer when they're first working with it, 
uh, better ways of working with CAD or especially around the plugins to the different CAD applications and reporting. So I can share with you sort of uh, uh, some key um, highlights of these different projects and, and what we've worked on there. So on the assembly side, a lot of great enhancements. So we've um, built out um, a great new viewer, uh, and so you can bring in assemblies and look at them directly in the web browser. There's actually some features in here now that are specific and unique to just the, the web application. So you can explode the view, you can section it, you can zoom in, you can make parts transparent. It's really a great way to work with assemblies uh, and sort of get insight into the parts that you need to uh, work on. We have a components table that allows you to list it and look at a tree view or table view. Uh, you have configurable columns, so if you want to look at, let's say, the mass or the cost and work uh, toward target mass or target uh, information, you can do that. And then for each part, there is a way of highlighting the specific, the laser pointer, it works, uh, some of the specific details about the part that you're currently looking at. And you can open those parts and then make some changes and, and those changes and those cost changes would then reflect in the assembly. So some great new tools for working with assemblies. Um, part of the assembly feature is also, we've taken a, a stab at sort of condensing and bringing the information about the assembly together in, in a very uh, concise form that gives you all the key features at a, glass, at a glance. So for example, uh, how many components are in this assembly? How many unique parts are in this assembly? Uh, what is the cost at mass, uh, mass at the moment? What's the target mass I'm working toward? What, is the, what are the different cost contributors, like how much is the components, how much is the assembly itself? So the idea is that you have these little summary tiles at a glance, but then you can dive in and, and deep dive into any one of these elements and explore them further. And so a third slide on some of the new assembly features that we've added, so we've sort of been introducing this through the year and when working on these in a very agile fashion. The, uh, we're starting to now also from the web app. Um, last year we didn't have this yet, but now we can start uploading and importing assemblies. So you can upload the assembly through the web app, cost it, and then work with it directly. Um, we're starting with uh, step support for now, but certainly we'll be expanding to all the native CAD formats that we support. Uh, you can sort of link and the nice thing is in the cloud, you're working in the same environment as the, everything's connected to the same database. So you have the web application, CI design, that, that you're looking at the same assembly that someone else is looking at in professional, that someone else is reporting on in CI report. So you sort of have that central source of data. And that extends to the, the different processes. So even though in CI design, we can't yet do any welding, um, or, uh, but for example, you can reflect any welding that was added in professional and you would see it here. Um, we did recently add secondary process support, but you get a nice little graphical breakdown just like you do with parts of all the different components that make up, make up the assembly. So that was one big uh, sort of work effort that was a key priority when customers looked at the first sort of versions of the app last year and the last few years. I think the other really exciting part is design to cost. We've done uh, a lot of work there, so all the major um, process groups that we support in the desktop, uh, there's five today, machining, plastics, sheet metal, die casting, sand casting. So all of those are supported here in the web app as well. Uh, and we've, we've done some work, in, again, uh, summarizing the information very concisely so you get that little um, you get that little uh, summary panel here that gives you sort of a summary of what the topics are. And then uh, you can dive into the specifics around uh, what are some of the issues that I really have to address that, that are unmanufacturable, like a bend that's too tight or a sharp internal corner. Uh, and then there's also a whole bunch of guidance on, uh, for example, here it's on holes and fillets where it highlights all the different hole sizes in a given part and it might highlight non-standard hole sizes which maybe they're there intentionally, but maybe it's something that you could take out because it would reduce cost to stick with standard holes. So a lot of great guidance, and I think it's structured in a way that's very easy to navigate and use for a designer. Uh, tied to some of the more design control that we've been trying to add is we've added uh, tolerancing, importing, reviewing, editing. So if you have tolerances defined in your CAD model, if you're using PMI and uh, a model-based uh, design, 
uh, those would come right in just like in the desktop or if you need to add and edit them here you have that ability now as well so that's a, uh, another great new feature and then the guidance on the DTC side actually extends to the tolerances so if you're in this case I think it's a sheet metal part where the surface tolerances is so tight that it can't be manufactured by the sheet metal process itself so this would highlight sort of what tolerance you've set it to what the max capability is of that particular process and then you can back off uh, either back off your tolerance or maybe you have to pick a different process to make this particular uh, part or feature. Also other feedback uh, initially when we first rolled this out we said okay here's the a priori uh, selected cost routing so it's the lowest cost routing that a priori finds but often that's something that you might need to tweak like I don't have that kind of machine I don't I don't need to add a secondary process so the um, the key things that we added is secondary process support and the ability to sort of edit that top level routing so you can see the ones that were actually costed and if you wanted to let's say switch from a laser to a water jet or something like that for three axis to four axis machining that's now built into uh, into here as well so gives you quite a bit more control you can actually pin the routing as well that's something you can do in in the desktop and you can review individual GCD operations in a sort of pop-up properties window also while you're working on this. That, um, yeah, this, I mean, it's hard to read, but it gives you sort of the specific oper bend operation. And if a cycle time is calculated for that particular item, that pops up here as well. So if we continue to add more capabilities, and, and a lot of this, I would say almost the priority of almost everything that you're seeing here is driven by our discussions with customers and the user council and visits that, um, that we've done, like the, the PM team and the UX team, and you have the usability lab here. If you participated in that, that is, again, has been one of the key inputs to what you're seeing on the screen and what we've added to the product. And that continues. Um, so as you have more ideas, as you see things here, it's like, well, the one key thing that's missing for me is um, you know, the next level of control or drilling into the routing some more. We're always looking for ideas to sort of, okay, what are we working on next um, in this, uh, on the UI? The, um, some great news too on plugins. So the, that's also been a key feedback that we need to support some plugins in here. We, uh, I mean, no particular, the, the main reason for saying okay, we're, we did Creo first was the initial set of customers, the, the largest number that came back to us is with a plugin request were for Creo. Uh, so we started with that because we had to start somewhere. Uh, so four, five, and I think six in the upcoming release. It uh, connects to the web application, so a very similar workflow. You hit cost in the uh, CAD system in Creo, and it pushes the file to the cloud and it costs it, and so it creates a much uh, an iterative workflow. We're also working on making that available for users um, using NX, and then we'll probably be looking at Katia next uh, as the next one. Um, but we'll keep building that out, and then there's SolidWorks and Inventor, and there's other ones that we can keep, uh, keep developing on, along a similar model. A few other things to highlight on the CAD side. Uh, on the web application today, you can just upload an individual part so that's actually changing in the next uh, release so you can do multi-part upload that will be a nice way to very quickly cost 10 20 parts there is um, this notion of an always on cat association so that is sort of a subtle difference but it actually i think is a really important one in um, the way different engineers collaborate so today if you upload cat files in the on-premise or in the desktop you associate your cat file to the the costing but then other users don't really have access to that, that same association. So what we're doing in the cloud solution, both for the professional use and for the web application, is that once you sort of make that connection once by one user, every user has that association, so it completely frees you up to change process groups, to recost, to evaluate. Um, so it's a very powerful capability that we're adding to the cloud tool. Um, and that, I mean, just to emphasize here, one of the platform pieces is all handled, uh, the data is fully encrypted, it's in transit and at rest. So whatever you, we are storing sort of at the back end there, 
is, is, is fully encrypted and secure for, uh, for the customer. Um, the other, I mean, it's another sort of settled platform piece. Uh, AppStream is a service we're using to deliver AP Pro. We have the ability to sort of create some very powerful instances there to support cores and RAM to help you uh, create, uh, have that kind of horsepower you need. Uh, so if you have, even if you have very complex parts, uh, that's a workflow we can support. Okay, um, and then finally on this sort of feature list, and this, this is probably a presentation all in itself. I mean, we, you're familiar with Cost Insight Report, and I think it's a whole application that we've had for quite a while. It, it's also been a web application from the start, so it wasn't that big of a shift to make that, bring that into the cloud. But it is an, a sort of exciting that you can now, when you, when you sort of deploy a cloud solution, out of the box you get all the applications, including this. So there's no servers to configure, no servers to install on your end. It's all just there from day one. You just start setting up your first export jobs and build some ad hoc views, and you're off and running. And I think a lot of these views are also built in out of the box. So we've got, I think, Pat, in the latest few releases, a whole bunch of new DTC reports. Right, that uh, have come in. So there's, a, there's a, a big library of out of the box reports that you can also leverage right from the beginning. And um, as one final, so the, uh, there's always the platform stuff. And if you were in Pat's presentation earlier, that's all the, the less exciting things to talk about. So we leave those to the very end. Uh, but they're really important because when we talk to customers, we, I mean, a lot get the questions like, is it secure? And the answer is yes, and we've done a lot of work around certification, so we hit some big milestones this year around uh, SOC 2, which is um, compliance around um, that a lot of software, comp a lot of sort of companies look for with a SaaS solution. We're at level one, and we're working toward level two uh, by the end of this year. The, there's uh, penetration testing. We use best practices working with Amazon on our cloud architecture, and of course, we're, we're GDPR compliant. So we, I think, sort of check all the boxes that are required for a secure web deployment. Uh, a lot of little notes about the architecture, and we have entire presentations about just that if, uh, if you're interested. And uh, we partner with Amazon as our infrastructure provider. So at the end, I, I wanted to um, touch on briefly on some of the new things that are coming and some of the new projects we're working on. So we are, I think, far from done in what we're building and uh, have had, still have a, a good list of additional capabilities that we want to build, build out. So user assistance and guided workflows is one of them. Uh, you might have seen a bit of that in the usability lab, uh, or the training lab this morning, or, or I think there's a, more chances to do that tomorrow. So that's, that's a great new feature. That, um, that we have, and I'll show you a bit of sort of a preview of that. We're doing more in assemblies. So assemblies, uh, deep costing, editing, bulk, uh, bulk changes, comparisons between assemblies. So there's a lot of great additional things we can do on the web product. We're not really done yet with the capabilities on uh, some of the process groups. So supporting two model and welding in the web app is something that we want to do as well. And then this morning you heard about, um, is it Run DMC now? <laughs> is the new name. But we, I mean, there's a sort of a loop. So there was some, I mean, Pat mentioned cost insight design as, as the tool that you jump to to then explore the output. Uh, so that kind of integration is, is something that we'll be working on. And the, also as we're building out more and more of these cloud applications, there is a, a necessary sort of a step to connect. How do you connect to all of those? So we are building sort of a single cloud home or cloud portal that you log into just one place. And from there, you connect to all the different apps that you might have access to. Uh, that will include report uh, and some of the new stuff, uh, CI design, uh, the AP Pro. So all the different uh, pieces. And then uh, we are also, of course, if you've, you might have heard about cost inside source. Uh, some of the, the new sourcing application we'll be working on, so that will fit into the same framework as well. Um, doing more platform projects around scaling, and, and then, yes, the, the new cost insight source application as well. 
So a couple of quick previews. If you want to see some of this live, then I'd recommend the Usability Lab, or we do have a, a tech showcase tomorrow, so I think there'll be a couple of demonstration, demonstrations I can show this. The, uh, you've seen this in the desktop, where if you go to DTC, there's places where you can get more guidance. You get insights, and it's this great learning tool, I think, for new engineers to understand why an issue comes up. So this is an example of a sharp corner issue that you can't really machine a sharp internal corner. So what we're adding is descriptive uh, text with nice graphics and nice views that is sort of pops up on demand and in context. So if you have a sharp corner issue, you get that little uh, sort of informational eye, and then you can jump on that, and it gives you a snippet of what that might mean. And that's something that we can actually configure and grow and develop uh, as, as we build out more DTC content. So you'll see more and more of this educational content in the app. Related to this, um, we also want to make it uh, way more easier and self-service to learn and use the app. So the, the cost insight design is already quite easy to sort of jump in and use on your own. But this uh, capability that we are we're now sort of going to add is allows you to have guided workflows right in the application. So it, uh, for example, if you're logging in for the very first time, you get this little, you click this question mark, you go to a uh, walkthrough, which says, okay, walk me through my first costing. And you go through some different steps. Uh, so here you're picking the process group. And uh, that sort of, at the end of that, it sort of tracks your progress. And it's, it's a great little tool for learning how to use this on your own. One last quick little snapshot of the portal. Uh, we'll leave a few minutes for questions. So that's also coming. Uh, and you'll see that sort of, I think, in the releases at the beginning of the year. Uh, just a, a quick way of jumping into the application and also be notified of planned downtime or maintenance or upgrade windows or there's some new news that, that we want to share about uh, the product or documentation. So that'll be sort of your one place to go for everything cloud. So I think that would also be a great addition to the tool. Um, so that's it. And in summary, so there is, uh, if you are interested, if this, uh, there's another presentation a bit later today about moving to the cloud. So that'll talk more about, okay, if you're interested in actually migrating or even as a new customer going to the cloud, what are some of the steps and phases involved. So we'll talk through that. The usability lab, um, there's, um, and I'm not sure if there's room left in any of the sessions, but there might be. So if you're interested, either seek out David Conant or, or Yen to connect or, or ask me. There is a tech showcase tomorrow, so we'll do some live demos. Uh, a bit of mention about this. I mean, this was just a piece of our roadmap, so don't think of this as sort of comprehensive. This was just some of the new cloud features. The roadmap tomorrow will cover sort of the full breadth of everything that we're doing, which is, is, is far bigger than just one component of that. And the last, I think, a point I want to leave you with is, is that we're sort of constantly adding new capabilities to this product uh, and um, at a very rapid pace. It's an opportunity to sort of get involved and help us out and work with us uh, early on. Certainly, that's, uh, we've gained a lot out of the customers we've engaged with early in this process. And, Hope to do that more in the next um, um, in the next coming year. Great, thank you.